Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. For today's review, we're going to take a look at the Mythic Legion's Covenant of Shadow Kador action figure by the Four Horsemen. And here is the packaging for Kador. Very standard Mythic Legion's um, blister pack. You've got the uh, clear part in the front so you can see the figure inside. And on the side, you've got a little bio about Kador. And just pause there if you want to read it. And then spinning around to the back, you've got a um, battle scene here. And if you want to read again, you can just pause there. And then there's pictures of other figures you can get. I think this is from the initial Kickstarter campaign. So it's not actually part of the 1.75 Covenant of Shadows series figures. And here you've got the emblem of the Noble Bear. And this packaging is very collector friendly, like all Mythic Legion's packaging. The backing card can be slid out and you can access the figure inside. And on the inside, you've got a bag with accessories in there. Shoulder pads, battle hammer, sword. And also you have a sword sitting in the front tray here. And as you can see, the figure itself is held in by one twisty tie. He comes with a pair of the spiked um, shoulder armor. He comes with a belt for the sword. And he comes with a short sword or a single handed sword. Nicely painted there. And also a double handed sword. Nicely painted there as well. And he also gets this battle arm, uh, battle hammer. It's very um, nicely sculpted, but uh, the paint job is a straight silver and no detail has been picked out with any other colors, unfortunately. But it does come with a optional replacement head. So you can put this piece on and with the optional part, you can actually turn it up this way if you like. So there is a little bit of customization um, option with this weapon however um, I would I would have liked to see uh, the handle being able to detach at the midpoint to make a short hammer that would have been kind of cool I think and here's a closer look at the figure at first I didn't know if this figure would work because he does have a few contrasting elements so his head is a knight's helmeted head whereas the rest of the body is the spiky um, armor that came that comes with the barbarian or the orcs figures generally speaking and his um, waist armor is also from the knight figure but I think because the uh, the color scheme really pulls everything together he actually looks really nice and here's a closer look at the head very nicely sculpted very nice sharp details you can see his uh, bronze and kind of purple color scheme going on there. Very nice paint job on the rest of the armor parts. You've got this um, kind of a brushed bronze finish over the top of black. So it looks used and um, weathered, which is nice. And let me just take off these shoulders so you can have a look at his musculature. Very nicely sculpted musculature on his body. So this is the standard Barbarian body. Um, and I think the paint job is pretty much the same as the Barbarian figure. But it is very, very nice. You can see all the highlights and the lowlights in the muscles there. And coming down to his waist armor. Very nice purple and bronze color scheme again. And these parts of course are soft so they move out of the way for articulation. And again on the leg armor, the feet armor, very nicely weathered effect. And here's a quick comparison with Atlas the Conqueror from series one and the All Stars Barbarian Builder set. So you can see there are a little bit of difference between the skin tones. In the series one, the low lights are not as visible as the uh, Coven Covenant of Shadow and the All-Star figures. 
Um, so actually, I think the paint job has improved on the newer figures. You can also see there's a massive paint chip on Atlas here. And the skin tone appears to be slightly darker as well, but only ever so slightly. Um, so there is, I think it is an improvement. And if you're still not familiar with the Mythic Legends figures, uh, one of the biggest selling points is the fact that everything is modular and you can pull it apart and create your own custom figures. So everything comes apart, the head, the torso, the armor, even the loincloth, everything pulls apart. So, and I think in the new series, it has been made easier to pull things apart, but it's still a little bit hard to do that on camera. So I'll just show you a very basic part swap. So I've got here Malice from series one. Oops. So you can swap the armor pieces around, change the loincloth, um, Basically, the possibilities are endless and it just all depends on what figures you've got on hand to do the swaps with. Pull the head off and put Kata's head on and you've got like a half skeleton, night warrior, barbarian slash undead um, warrior. One thing I do want to point out is that um, with the new Covenant of Shadows figures as well as the All Stars figures, um, on the barbarian body, the ball has been left unpainted. I think it's due to the fact that a lot of people were getting broken ball joints uh, from their Series 1 figures. Which means, uh, heads, such as the skull head from Series 1, will, fit, will sit very loosely on the, new, um, the newer figures. Which is not great. Um, but it means that there's no more broken neck joints. I guess it's a good thing. So that's just one thing to point out. But the head that comes with the figures will sit very nicely. With articulation, his head is on a big ball joint. So he can spin it all the way around and look up that far and down that far. He's got a pin and hinge shoulder joint. So he can lift up his arms that far down that far and all the way around. There's no bicep swivel, um, but there is swivel at the elbows. So you can get that kind of action going. And single jointed elbow gives him slightly less than 90 degrees. And there's a uh, swivel at the top of the gauntlets because it's a separate part. And there's also a uh, swivel at the wrist. And with the wrist, there's also a hinge joint, so you can turn his hand in and out. Big ball joint for the waist, so he can rotate all the way around. Slight um, side to side action here, and he can crunch that far forward and that far back. And coming down to his hips, he's got a uh, pin and hinge for the hips so he can kick up that far forward, kick back that far, and he can do massive amount of splitting, which is really good. And there's also a thigh swivel hidden here, so he can rotate his leg. Single jointed um, knee gives him about a 90 degree bend. And you can obviously swivel here as well because that's a peg joint. And then coming down to his ankles, this far down, this far up, and there's also ankle tilt, which is good, and obviously rotation. So pretty good in terms of articulation. And the joints themselves, um, I do find that the hips are a little bit on the loose side. Um, but everything else is quite nice. And in terms of height, he comes in at just under 18 centimeters tall. So he's about a seven inch scale action figure. And now for some size comparisons. Here he is with Mythic Legion's Botha Shadowhorn. Here he is with Mafex Batman. Here he is with Mesco 112 Collective Batman. Here he is with DC Films Superman. Here he is with SH Figure Arts Tony Stark. Here he is with DC Icon Screen Arrow. And finally, here he is with Marvel Legends Cyclops. 
Originally, I didn't even order this guy. Um, he was actually sent to me by mistake. Um, I actually ordered Gorthok, but I am pretty happy that the Four Horsemen sent me this guy instead of Gorthok, because um, with the Mythic Legions line, obviously there's a lot of different factions, but my favorite is obviously the Barbarians, as you can see in the background. I'm kind of building my Barbarian Horde, so I'm really glad that they sent me Kador instead. I mean, at first I didn't think this color scheme and the mix of knight armor and barbarian bits would work, but seeing him in hand, he actually works very well. Um, he is a little bit on the goldish bronze side, so I am going to be swapping out some of these armor bits for the darker um, barbarian stuff from the barbarian builder set. Um, but I'm very happy with him, and if you haven't already checked out the Mythic Legions line, I highly recommend this line. It is freaking awesome. And that concludes my review of the Mythic Legions Kador action figure. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time for another toy review.